the youth minister has. Uh, but I am really uh, thankful to be able to be here uh, uh, speaking with you and uh, talking about our mission trip to Florida. Uh, that's what this morning is all about, being able to share our experiences. Uh, it's not just going to be me up here. We have two chairs because uh, we're going to have some people who are actually uh, there. Some of our high school students and uh, Leslie as well are going to come up and share their experiences. Uh, but we, uh, it was a wonderful week. Uh, and We want to share some of the lessons that we learned uh, with you guys to, as an encouragement uh, to lift your spirits and to uh, just have all of us on the same page as we stride forward in, in serving together and impacting this community here, but also the community around us. I'm very much looking forward to uh, this morning and what's to come. Uh, first, I just want to talk about a little bit about uh, the trip itself. Uh, not exactly what we did because uh, the high schoolers will share that. Uh, but just kind of the, the travels, why, why we went down there. And, uh, and it actually really started with uh, the hurricane that took place. Uh, and I was like, you know what, like, man, it would be so wonderful to be able to go down there, uh, help uh, you know, rebuild, you know, to do whatever we can uh, to be a part of that, that process and helping families out, helping, helping communities out. Uh, and, and the reality is kind of by the time we got down there, you know, all, all of that's kind of already taken place, all the cleanup, uh, not quite every, everywhere, but where we were in Tampa, uh, th the damage had already been, had been cleaned up. Uh, but we went down to Tampa, Florida, uh, at the Common Ground Christian Church there in Tampa. Uh, Bruce Humphrey was their uh, pastor, and that's kind of one of their ministries uh, at their church is to provide youth groups from around the country uh, to come and serve in Tampa, serve in the community. Uh, so very thankful to do that. Uh, it's two, it was four very long travel days. Um, driving the van with the trailer was not super fun for 15 hours and on one day. Um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was pretty crazy. On the way down, I think we got tired of fried chicken in the south. I think it was three meals in a row we had fried chicken. Uh, so, so that wasn't really plans. Two of them were, but the third one wasn't, and, and that's okay. Uh, I love my fried chicken. Uh, so, um, so yeah, uh, long travel days, uh, it was nice that we got to watch some movies and whatnot, but uh, we're very glad to get down there, uh, to see, see the palm trees, uh, just to be in an environment that just looks different uh, and feels different than what we experience here in Michigan. And uh, so, like I said, I, I, I'd like us to be able to just be on the same page and talking about uh, moving forward together and, and sharing our lessons and, and having us be in the same mindset about serving. Because uh, that's what this whole, this whole trip was about serving, giving up of our time to serve people we don't even know. Uh, and it was a very, very powerful thing that we were able uh, to do. Uh, and kind of the key verse that I want us to focus on in, in following the footsteps of Jesus when it comes to serving is found in the book of John in chapter 15, uh, starting in verse 9. John 15, 9. As, as the Father, this is Jesus speaking, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. And so a cool moment with that last verse there, laying down our lives for our friends, uh, was that how many of you have the YouVersion app on your phones? Uh, did anybody notice uh, what the verse of the day was? Did anybody get that notification? It's actually John 15, 13. When I saw that this morning, I was like, that's unbelievable. Uh, so it was a very cool moment. But yeah, that's, that's what serving is all about. That's what love is all about. And, and, and we know that Jesus laid down his life uh, for the ultimate cost for, for, for us in, uh, in covering our sins and allowing us to be in a right relationship with God. Uh, but there's also a message of being able to lay down our life for our friends and people that are here on earth, uh, giving up of our time, uh, giving up of our energy, giving up of our, 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 our finances, giving up of our resources that we have. Uh, that's just another way that we can give up ourselves for others. Uh, and that's what we're called to do, and that's what we were able to do down in Florida. And it's such a wonderful thing. And, and, and it's kind of interesting. Anytime there's a service project or a mission trip or anything like that, uh, the, the mindset going into it is like, do we just get really hyped up and really excited about just what difference we're going to make uh, in the community or with the people that we're interacting with. Uh, we get very excited about making the difference, making some changes happen. 
Uh, but one thing that kind of takes place in those moments and in those weeks, weekends, whatever it might be, is that when we serve, we find that it's actually us who are changed, that we are the ones who learn something. We are the ones who really get something truly valuable out of it. And it's not to say that the people we serve don't get something out of it, because they absolutely do, but it's just amazing how powerful it is that, that we get to grow, uh, that we get to learn something, that we get to be more complete in following Jesus, in following in his footsteps. Uh, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to have uh, two of our high schoolers come up, and they're going to share with us kind of what we did while we're down there. Uh, then after that, we'll get into kind of the lessons that we learned uh, while we were there, the things that we got out of it uh, that maybe we weren't expecting when we were driving down there. So the first person I'm going to ask to come up is Jamie Dills. And Jamie is going to talk to us about kind of what took place uh, Sunday morning down in Tampa, and what, or Sunday morning, morning and afternoon, and what we were able to do down there. So you can give her a hand. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. Good. They're good for me. But, uh, so, so, Jamie, uh, in what ways did our group get to serve at Common Ground Christian Church on Sunday morning? Well, for Common Ground, we were divided into groups, and there were three categories we could go into and serve with. There was communion and offering, there was child care, and you could be a greeter. And which one did you do? I was a greeter. <laughs> <laughs> and how was that experience for you? It was really interesting because I had never been a greeter before. It was my first time, and of course you get welcomed into our church, and it's really a nice experience, but I never been to their church, and I didn't really know what to expect. But as soon as I started greeting and handing out pamphlets, everyone that came in was so happy. They had a smile on their face. They gave me a big hug. They're like, you're from Michigan? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. And it was just, <laughs> it was pretty crazy. We talked about the weather a little bit, because how could you not <laughs> with the difference? But it was a really cool experience, and it made me realize that I might want to do it at our church. So it was really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so, uh, so we moved from the church, and then what did we do in the afternoon uh, working at a laundromat? Oh, the laundromat. Yeah, that was a really neat experience. Um, well, some people did different jobs again. There was distributing dryer sheets, detergent, quarters, and one person, Megan Sear, helped sign in people for um, the lines and keeping track of who had what and laundry kind of thing. And then there was this tape where you wrote their name on the tape to put on the washer and the dryer so they could keep track of whose was in what and that kind of thing. Cool. And uh, what did you do at the laundromat? I did the tape. <laughs> <laughs> so that was an interesting experience. <laughs> yeah, the, the tape didn't stick very well, did it? No, it did not. Every time you put it on, it would start rolling, falling off. And it was just... It was stressful, let me tell you that. <laughs> Very stressful. So, so what was your experience interacting with the people of Tampa at the laundromat? That was a very, very cool experience. Like again, I did not know going in what was gonna happen, how I was gonna interact with these people and stuff because I don't really get into those situations very often, just living where I do and that kind of thing. But as soon as I started asking what their name was for the tape and interacting with them, they were so open. Um, we said good morning. They had a big smile on their face. They were just, there's a genuine warmth to them. And it was really cool because having such little things and all that kind of stuff, they're always really happy and joyful. And you got to hear their side of their story. And that was really interesting for me because each person, different personality, different story, and a different genuine personality about them. So it was really cool learning about their stories and their backgrounds. Cool. Thank you, Jamie. Right. You can give her another hand. <laughs> so that was Sunday, and Sunday was a unique day. It was before we started our official projects. Uh, and to talk about uh, our projects, what we're doing the rest of the week, uh, please welcome Josh Wilson Josh to Wilson. the stage. <laughs> and uh, Josh, Josh also got to serve as our uh, DJ in the van uh, for, for part of the trip, uh, giving us some tunes. So... We appreciate that as well. All right, so Josh, uh, so we served at an elementary school uh, all week. Uh, can you kind of walk us through what that looked like? Okay, so at the start of the week, we began with helping teachers clean out their classrooms and design their classrooms and setting up the school, moving boxes and other equipment around. And we also helped with bulletin boards. And the further we got into the week, the more 
outside service stuff we did and inside service. So we began uh, painting bathrooms and we painted the teacher's lounge and rearranged it. And then we also were power washing all week outside and we cleaned the front garden. And what was your job or main job? My for the main week? job was power washing. Yes. And uh, what was that like? Hot. <laughs> <laughs> Very hot. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes indeed. Uh, so what was it like overall to just help, you know, these teachers, the school get ready for the new school year, which I think starts tomorrow, I, th I think? Mm -hmm. So it was, it was a good experience. Uh, I found a lot of um, fun working with other people as well as working with the staff that were there too. They were very kind and appreciative. Yeah. So that was yeah. Yeah. They definitely were. All right, thank you, Josh. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's uh, <laughs> absolutely. So that, that's, that's the bulk of our week, uh, being able to help at the church, uh, serving uh, the laundromat, but the main, uh, the main part was at Broward Elementary School uh, in Tampa, getting them ready for their school year, uh, helping the teachers out, uh, making the grounds look nice and presentable as new families were going to be coming in. Uh, and it was just a true, uh, true blessing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get into kind of the lessons uh, that we learned, things that really stuck out to us uh, throughout the entire week, uh, that we want to share with you guys. Uh, and, and the first one is kind of talking about um, that when we serve, you said that we, we, we are the ones who change. Yeah, we do make a difference, uh, but we, we are changed. And one thing that takes place when we serve, when we serve one another, serve a community, is that we find uh, purpose and we find passion. We find some purpose and we find our passion. And to talk more about that, I'm gonna ask Megan Sear uh, to come to the stage. All right, so, Megan, big question for you. How would you describe yourself when it comes to meeting new people? Believe it or not, I'm actually kind of shy in new environments. At church, it's a lot easier because I'm around people I've known since I was very young, or even at school, I'm around a group of friends who I know I'm very close to, but in new environments, I tend to be kind of afraid because I don't know what's like going to happen, and I like to know things, <laughs> believe it or not. So, yeah, I tend to... <laughs> <laughs> so, so knowing that, uh, being in a new environment down there, uh, so talk, talk to us about your role at the laundromat. So when we were at the laundromat, we, got, we were talking to this lady, I don't remember her name, I don't know if you do, but she was like the leader of the project there, and so she was talking about the different roles, so she was just saying, and she said, oh, there's a, people, a person who needs to greet people, and I was like, okay, I guess I can do that. And so I volunteered because no one else was really volunteering for anything. And so what I had to do is when people came in, I had to like talk to them, write their names down, figure out how many loads they had, and just basically send them off to like Anna or um, my sister or Jamie. And they would set them up in a lawn, like a washing machine or a dryer or whatever else they needed. Cool. And that's awesome to be able to put yourself out there. Uh, but what was it just that... Uh, nobody, else, nobody else was uh, asking to do it or signing up to do it, but what made you so quick to jump into that role? See, for me, I was originally going to do what Jamie did and write tape on the washing machines, but I was like, wait, this gives me an opportunity to put myself out there in a way I never really would want to do, but like, it was Florida, so I was like, okay, new experience, new people, new everything, might as well do it see what happens. If I don't really like it, I can probably trade with someone. So <laughs> <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Didn't end up happening, thank goodness. Right. So. <laughs> so, so what was your experience, experience like and what did you learn about yourself uh, through that process? So for me in the beginning, it was very stressful because I didn't really know how the project really ran itself in the beginning. So I was just kind of like, I don't really know what I'm doing here. <laughs> And it was very interesting as the day, well, it was only for a few hours. So as the hours went by, I was finally getting the hang of it. And like people would like try to like jump in front of others. And I'm like, no, you kind of have to wait for this person. So I was kind of able to stand up for myself in that way. And so I really like learned that I can put myself in a position of leadership, which I'm not really as like growing up in high school, like I was always like under a director or something. So being able to put myself in a permit, uh, perm <laughs> <laughs> position of leadership was a very interesting experience and very fun. Yeah, and you did a great job with it. We call it, Megan, our Sunday MVP. So yes. We're very, we're very appreciative of what you did down there, and thank you for sharing with us your experience. Yeah. 
Uh, and, and, that's, and that's so true that just talking about purpose and passion, uh, and that's what we're created for when, it, when we talk about serving. Uh, when, we talk, when we look back at Genesis in chapter 1 and 2, uh, we talk about how God told Adam to take care of all living creatures, take care of what is in front of you. Uh, and then when, when he wasn't good enough at it, uh, God said, you need a helper. Um, and so he gave, uh, he gave him Eve. Uh, and, uh, and that's just what it's all about in those first two chapters, setting up this, uh, this wonderful thought for us and this, in this, uh, this challenge for us that we are to take care of each other. We are supposed to take care of everything that's in this world. And that's what our calling is. Uh, so when we put ourselves out there, uh, even if it's scary, even if it's something that we don't normally do, uh, we discover some purpose. We discover passion. We might find that we're actually really good at something uh, that we didn't think we would be good at. Uh, but one thing that when we think about um, purpose and, and kind of pushing through and, and discovering those things, putting ourselves in a situation where we're not comfortable, uh, one word that was used throughout the entire week uh, was perseverance. Uh, having perseverance, that was a huge lesson for us throughout the week, is having perseverance. Uh, and and there's, a, there's a verse that goes with that. It's J uh, James chapter 1, verses 2 uh, two to four, and I didn't have a bookmark, so I probably should have. Uh, so let's just read it together up here. So there we go. All right, so uh, consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Uh, and, and that was, that was something, uh, each morning we did a devotional together, and that was one of our devotions, actually, was talking about perseverance and focusing on this verse and realizing that when we do push through and we do push further than we think we can, uh, we do become more complete. Uh, we do gain wisdom. Uh, we, we, we become more mature in what's going on. Uh, so to talk about perseverance and what that looks like uh, in his experience out of Florida, uh, please welcome to the stage Harold Wilson. Not Josh's twin, uh, believe it or not. Um, here you go. All right, so Harold, uh, throughout the week, what project did you mainly work on? I worked mainly on pressure washing. Yeah, so you, you and Josh worked together, and you gave each other uh, breaks here and there, which was awesome. Uh, so when it comes to perseverance, what challenges, there, what challenges were there throughout the week for you? I, I actually got bit three times by fire ants, and... <laughs> and there was uh, the Florida heat. I also got sunburn. Yeah, uh, yeah. and th those are definitely tough things to be able to push through, huh? Uh, so what did you learn about yourself, though, by pushing through and persevering through that? I learned I can accomplish big things. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, and so one thing we also did uh, throughout the week, uh, each, each afternoon when we got home, we took like an hour out to hour and a half nap time. Uh, it's very intentional, specific time to just relax. Just lay on your air mattress or cot and just, let's just cool off, let's cool down, uh, and let's just relax. Uh, so what was the difference between maybe uh, taking a break at home, you know, through the summer, there might not be much to do, but what was the difference when we were able to take a break down in Florida? I appreciated resting after working hard. It, like, felt so much better than if you, rather than if you didn't work hard and then you just took a break. Right. Is that so much yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think we all really love the nap time. That might have been <laughs> the best part of the day. So, all right, thank you so much, Harold. Thank you for sharing with us. Oh, yeah, and that's, that's absolutely true. You know, we think about, you know, doing some pressure washing, uh, painting, whatever it might be, and, you know, just, yeah, I really need a break, and, and deservedly so. Uh, but then we think about how God designed this life to be, this world to be, and we think about all that he created, then even he took the time to rest. Uh, and he did a lot more than we did in Florida. Uh, but he, he took the time to rest. And I think that's just a wonderful example for us uh, to follow. Because some of us might be pushing ourselves further and further and further. And we don't take that time to just sit back and breathe. And then just gain our energy, uh, do some praying, and then proceed forward. Uh, so that's just a wonderful lesson that we learned that work hard and earn that time to rest and relax. Uh, so finally, uh, and one thing we talked about is uh, just appreciating uh, that rest time. Uh, and, and appreciation was another huge theme for us throughout the week. Um, and to keep, keep up with these P words, 
Um, you know, we had uh, purpose, passion, perseverance, and in the South, we would call it appreciation. You know, I, I, I appreciate you. Uh, so if you want to keep that going, you know, you can write that in there, apostrophe P, all right? So, yeah, well, I was trying to learn them some good words down there, um, but I, I don't know if it stuck. So uh, what we're going to do right now is we're going to have Leslie Dills come up and talk to, talk to us about her experience with uh, appreciation through the week. You can clap for her, too. Oh, she even has the elementary school shirt on. Look at that. Yes. All right, so Leslie, uh, what was your overall impression of the trip? I will say this is my first mission trip. I had never been on one before, so uh, I was very excited to have the opportunity. And whenever I talk to people that have been on mission trips before, they always come back and they say, it's life-changing, my perception has changed, um, and my relationship with God has gotten closer. And it's, you come back and you're not the same person. And I absolutely saw that. Um, so it, just all the hard work that we did, the kids worked so hard, yes. and it was uh, just an awesome experience. Yeah. Uh, so share with us how the teachers and the faculty at Broward Elementary showed their appreciation for us throughout the week. Um, Broward Elementary is a, what's called a Title I school, and if you don't know what a Title I school is, it's, uh, it's got a lot of families that struggle financially, so the, the government gives more funds towards them so they have the opportunity to, to, that other more wealthy schools have. So many of the families that send their kids to this school are, have you know, single parent families. Um, there is just very poor in the area that we were working in. Um, and when we walked in and they, they said, we have two weeks until school starts. And if you know a teacher, you can see panic on their face <laughs> of how much they have to get done. So the first day, as Josh was talking about, lots of moving, lots of bull, um, bulletin boards being made, um, cleaning up the outside, the power washing, the painting. We just made the school look so beautiful, and they were blown away, absolutely blown away. Uh, we overheard the art teacher who had come in a couple of days after we had uh, painted the bathrooms, and she was saying, I'm amazed that teenagers have done this and worked so hard, it's beautiful. So um, it was just uh, making their lives a little easier and you could see the relief on the, the faces. Yeah. So how do you think that impacted our group as we continued to work and persevere through the heat and, and everything? Well, as Jacob said, we had devotions each morning and at night we would have debriefs uh, before we went to bed. So we would meet in the sanctuary and we'd talk and appreciation was one of the things we talked about a lot that when we go on a mission trip or we go to serve others, we don't necessarily need to be looking for appreciation because we're working for the Lord. But when people come up to you and say, wow, I'm, I'm amazed that you guys came from Michigan down to here to do this for us, it, it was just amazing and it helped us continue to just work harder and work harder. So um, I think it was a push forward, but I think we also had a life lesson that uh, we don't necessarily need to be appreciated. Yeah. So yeah. it was great. Cool. Thank you so much. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. We talked about appreciation probably more than anything else. And, and we did talk about how that's not why we do it. That's not the purpose of it. Um, but it does just create, it's so encouraging to receive that um, appreciation, that, that gratitude. It did push us through the week. Uh, but then we also had another, uh, another side of talking about appreciation, and it's something we, start, we struggle with so much, is um, showing our appreciation for those who serve us, uh, whether it's our families, friends, teachers, coaches. Uh, we just have a hard time finding the words or making the time uh, to say thank you. Um, but, but one thing that we talked about, too, which was cool, was when we see that maybe, and we, we all acknowledge that, yeah, we need to work on this. We do need to say thank you more and show that better. Uh, but we but we were able to look at it and say that now our parents, uh, our families, uh, don't they continue to serve even when they don't get the appreciation? And they said, yeah, yeah, they do. Uh, and that's where we landed on. That is, that is unconditional love. Uh, that is the love of God uh, that whether it's a family or even, even our, with our relationship with God, uh, that when, he, when he's constantly uh, blessing us, he, he's, he's showing his love to us, he's showing forgiveness and grace, 
uh, and when we, we, we might not say thank you as much as we should, um, but the fact that he still wants to uh, sets that, ex that example of what unconditional love looks like. Uh, and that's just a, per <laughs> you know, what a wonderful relationship to jump into and what a wonderful way to look at our relationships with one another that, you know, even if I don't get a thank you, um, I'm going to continue to serve you because I love you, uh, because, because you are worth it. Uh, and then, you know, of course, we do hope for the appreciation, but uh, yeah, it's an unconditional love. Um, as we're talking about uh, with the, the verse from John is laying down our lives for our friends, doing that unconditionally as Jesus did. Uh, so so those, were, those were our three main things that really stuck out to us is putting ourselves into a place where we can discover our purpose and discover our passion, um, really understanding and working through perseverance, pushing through and understanding that we can do more than, we're, than we think we can. And then finally, just this life lesson on appreciation. Uh, just how, how it affects us when we do work and, and trying to take steps to uh, use it more and, and thank others uh, more effectively. Uh, so, so what we're going to do right now is uh, we have, uh, Leslie actually uh, put up this uh, video for us of the trip, of different pictures and videos, and uh, the kids haven't seen this yet, so they're kind of like, oh boy, what is, what's, what's going to happen? Uh, so please just sit back and enjoy this video from the mission trip. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again Increase in us we pray Unveil why we're made Come set our hearts ablaze with hope Like wildfire in our very souls Holy Spirit come invade us now We are your church Kingdom. Okay. 
As I said there at the end, uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, to serve. And, and I do want to reiterate that. Thank you so much uh, for, for uh, with, the, with the envelope system that we had, whether it was going to the California Pizza Kitchen, uh, that you uh, were, were a part of making this happen through prayer, uh, through giving, uh, that you played a role in allowing us to go impact the school that was down there, to help those teachers out, and to make a difference that will last a lifetime uh, for our group. Uh, that you are a part of that. Uh, so that I'm so thankful that it was just a huge group effort, even if it might not have felt like it, uh, that you have made a difference in the life uh, of this youth ministry. So thank you so much for that. Uh, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to enter into our time of communion. Uh, so, uh, and, and this is just a great